Shania. What up guys? It's the Shania and I am here with another video. Today I'm at CBC. I'm going to 98.1 for Soka Avenue interview. It is the day right after 4 day morning. I am completely tired. I got home probably like 8 something this morning. Sorry if there's been in this vlog. And I have been up for like 11 to get here for this 12.30 interview. Let me tell you, it's a grain. And then tonight I'm going, this is Rick. Then there is something tomorrow. I can't, I can't remember. But then the following day is jump up day, big day. And I just party until it's done. But stay tuned. I'm taking you with me to this interview. Whoa. No problem. Good, good, good. How are you doing? You I, look tired, I am so tired. That's the honest truth. Oh, it was four day morning because I didn't four day morning that. was completely good. <laughs> I still have pain and everything on me, but um, I had a blast. I jumped with colors. Mm. How did you manage to make it here? Well, I basically got two hours of sleep and I just set my alarm and mm -hmm. I said, you know, I have to come here. So, okay, okay. Tell me about your uh, 2019 season thus far. Well, my 2019 season has been completely different than it was last year, whereas last year I was in competition. This year I was not in competition, but however, I actually would have got to sing at places. Last year I didn't sing anywhere, besides on the Party Monarch stage. So this year I would have sang at Beer Fest, I would have sang at Soka Fridays, I sang at Soka on the Hill. Yeah. Nice. So this year, uh, yeah, I saw you. I saw you perform at Soko on the Hill. How was that performance for you? It was fun. I actually had a blast. Mm -hmm. The crowd, I literally got a bet. That's probably like my best crowd response I ever got since I was singing Soka. Wow. So that was exciting for me. Oh, nice. Tell me about your song, Rice. Well, my song is Raise. Raise, sorry, not Raise. And it is about what happened to me last year at Party Monarch, mm -hmm. where my microphone was low, so the audience couldn't hear me for like a good. I don't even know, but it was a good. At the very beginning of my song. Tell me a bit about that experience before you move on though. Like how was it on stage? How did it feel? On stage mm -hmm. I felt completely comfortable. I did not know that you couldn't hear me because the house the speakers to me mm -hmm. I could hear but the house speakers is what oh, was off. Oh. Okay. So it's only when I got off stage then people were like, Ashani, you know that you couldn't hear you. So then when I watched over the performance, because I do record everything because I am a YouTuber mm -hmm. and and basically I was just like, oh well, you know, it's already done. There's nothing that I could do. Mm -hmm. But you know, it didn't discourage me or anything because you know things happen True. and there's always technical difficulties that can occur. That's really good. That's really good. How long have you been involved in music? In music, yeah. I would say from the age of seven, mm -hmm. but at the age of 11 is when I stood in front of a congregation for the first time. That was in church and I sang Alabaster Box and I received a standing ovation. So I started in the church and then I moved on to the Alexandra School because at 11 then I would have said 11 plus. Mm -hmm. And I joined the Beacons there and that was a choir we used to sing at a lot of different places but I only used to sing gospel and then we separated where we got a smaller group and we were called the Beacon Select and we would also sing at NIFCA you know we win awards bronze medals James Millington etc then after there I would have moved on to Parkinson where I met Randy Eastman I met Sheldon Hope I was singing inside of the um, choir because there was two different things there was the choir and then there was the band and the choir would sing gospel and we would sing at gigs but then with Randy Eastman then um, our band was called Revolution mm -hmm. and I I got introduced to so much different genres so that opened up my avenue in singing different things fast forwarding to how I got into Soka which was four years ago I was walking along the beach one day and I met this guy his name is Darren Grant mm -hmm. and I was singing I was with my mom and he was like sing that tune again so when I sang it then he was telling me you know he's a producer etc we exchanged numbers mm -hmm. the following year he messaged me and he was like you know he has this song so I went the same time and recorded the, the song the background vocals everything all in that one take and then it just started from there wow this sounds like something from a movie though. <laughs> I had to walk on the beach, the producer walk past and hear you and you decide to, you know? Mm -hmm. how, how, like, how was that like though? Like, you, did, you, did you think he was, he was like, you know, um, as a female sometimes mm -hmm. people might approach you for different things or whatever the case is. Did you feel that that was going along that line? Or Honestly, you, no. Or was the vibe? Were you going with the vibe? I was just like, at first I was like, who is this guy that's asking me to sing over? But I was exactly. with my mommy. Uh -huh. So I was just like, you know, giving the number the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. 
um, you know, you could always block. <laughs> true, <laughs> but true, true. Yes, okay. it it wasn't anything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So did you enter the song in the competition as well? Yeah. You mean the first year? Yeah. No. You didn't? Why not? No. Because honestly, I knew nothing really about soca. I was no getting into it. Well, not, not about soca, but in, the, in terms of the industry, I was unaware because this was new to me. I didn't know about cost gap. I didn't know about nothing. Oh. <laughs> so then I had to actually... Funny enough, it's only in my third year where I actually found out more about it. And um, the cost gap and whatnot. Because in my second year too, I still... You know, I was still still trying to feel out, you know, the industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what's been the most challenging thing for you so far? Um, I would say probably album. like getting out there because you gotta find that song that's gonna be a hit to actually get you known. Um, even getting gigs that are paid mm -hmm. also, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But that would come with the song that is a hit. So don't you think so do you have a manager right now? No, I don't. Are you looking to get a manager? No. So you you want to work on it, work on your promotion um, by yourself as a solo? Not necessarily. I mean, like if it was supposed to happen, because I did have one last year, mm -hmm. and that did not work out. So I just, you know, it kind of turned my mind a bit. But I mean, I still would if I was supposed to find a good manager. Okay. So tell me a bit about your your YouTube now. No problem. You're a YouTuber, <laughs> so. So I started YouTube two years and two months ago. Mm -hmm. Um, it is something that I have always wanted to do when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I used to record videos and put on YouTube, but then I got so much heat when I went to school and I delete <laughs> all of them. I could not handle that pressure. <laughs> but now I got older and more mature. I'm just like, you know what? I don't even care. Like, I'm going to put it out there because it's something that I love. Yeah. And I, I vlog my life wherever I go because I travel too. And okay. I let the world see. And I also bring people here. <laughs> When I say I bring people here, I mean there are people, there are tourists who come and they always want to know, you know, places to go in Barbados, what to do, where to eat, clubs, you know, they all, they even message me in my DMs, you know, you know, I'm here in Barbados, what can I do or whatever, and I can always relate them back to my channel or I can even give them personal nice. advice, yeah. Nice, that's fantastic. So what more can we expect from you when it comes to soca music like in 2020? Right, before I get there, the channel is Adventures with Ashania <laughs> on YouTube. You spell Ashania A S H A W N, there's Sean in the middle, A Sean Y A Ashania. Um, 2020, I'm looking to work with other people because so far I have been um, only working with Darren Grant and Ian Reeves at Underground Music. Mm -hmm. Last year, I did work with somebody else, which is music, music core, where I sang Andale. That was a sweet soca. That was my, I think, first or second sweet soca. Um, but yeah, um, I'm actually thinking about, not thinking, I'm actually going to work on other genres as well. Because I'm not only a soca singer, I'm actually more ballad than soca. But soca is something I tried and I actually loved. <laughs> so that's why I'm still there in, into the soca as well. Nice. Now I want I I will give you a break today mm -hmm. and not let you sing your song. Okay. You sure? You so are you are it you doesn't want to matter. You sure? Cause I know you're tired. I really am. Exactly. So <laughs> I will I will give you a break today. It's all good because um, there will be next year too. So mm -hmm. next year, when you bring you turn three songs, you can come in and sing those. No problem. Okay. <laughs> but you still have to do a campari cake, however. No problem. Good. So you sure you're ready for that? I guess. Remember, you can ask anybody in here. You could call anybody you want, you could text anybody <laughs> you want, okay? Mm hmm Good, alright. Now, it's easy though. Mm hmm What never asks questions, but is always answered? What never asks questions, but is always answered? Mm hmm How is this easy? It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. You got answers all in the room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what? Okay, so I was helped. Thanks, Mikey. <laughs> Doorbell. <laughs> Doorbell. Simple. But like, I would have never guessed that. Simple, to be honest, simple, I mean, simple. I got the previous one, which was seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, simple. Somebody <laughs> no messages me, asks me if it's a phone. Simple. <laughs> Doorbell. Doorbell. <laughs> so, what more can we expect from Ashonia? Well, more vlogs, mm -hmm. more music, different I'm gonna genres. I'm gonna check out the vlog though. No problem. Yes. More vibes. Mm -hmm. Because I like I like pasty soca. 
Um, I promised to try the sweet soak. I mean, I did try it before, mm -hmm. but I think I'm, I want to try a sweet soak as well. But I like, I like fast. You like pace. fast? Why you like yeah. pace? Because that's me. I'm an energetic person. Mm -hmm. I mean, I might not look so now because let me tell you, I'm so <laughs> tired. But I, I got real energy. I always happy, bubbly, spirity. That's my personality. So it's true because at Mars, where you, your energy look entirely different to how we see Yeah, I can, I can understand that. And then I go in. This is right tonight. Like I don't know what I'm doing to myself. Yeah, you, you but need, yeah. you need to go home and rest. You really <laughs> need to go home and rest for real, for real, for real. Thank you so much for passing through the avenue. Thank you for having and, uh, me. Have a good time at this is right tonight. And, I uh, will enjoy the rest of the season too. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. There, have it. Alright, y'all. So that was the interview. I'm actually heading back home to get like a couple more Z's. Uh, Cause I, I I probably gotta get her and go out again because I have to go and collect costumes and what have you for oh, Kaduma Day. Kaduma? It's it's ridiculous, guys. Like but Kaduma? stay tuned. Yes. What? Whoa!